Alrighty. Um, uh, thanks everyone for joining the October 2nd, 2018 MicroProfile Live Hangout. Um, if uh, you have joined, um, there is a link to the meeting minutes in the chat window. Uh, please add your name and organization afterwards if it's uh, relevant. Um, and it is everyone's shared responsibility to take notes during the call. So please take notes. Uh, we do not have a very large agenda today. So um, does anyone have anything to add to the backlog? Yeah, as I mentioned before, I just want to introduce a white paper, maybe for five or 10 minutes and ask for your help for your review. Okay. And anything else to add to the backlog? Um, I think I would like to add these OSGI pull requests that were submitted by someone some time ago where Emily is discussing that with the submitter and um, as she's taking the lead, I think it could be good if she would just tell where we stand here. So everyone is, is trusting Emily to do the right things. <laughs> Uh, this, this one is a uh, Raymond from um, uh, I'm not sure which company, no. but he's really cool. Hmm? Isn't it different? Right. Uh, we... Let's just add, let, yeah, let's not get into the discussion yeah, quite yet. Yeah. Um, let's just add it to the backlog and we can discuss it when we get there. Um, so I apologize. Again, trying to run an efficient meeting. <laughs> well, so that may require occasionally, unfortunately, kind of being uh, a little bit strong arming around uh, the conversation, so apologize. Um, but um, since we have a uh, relatively light agenda, um, is it okay if we move the white paper to the front of the agenda and uh, give Lars a chance to um, uh, introduce the white paper, get feedback, and then drop off? Yeah, I think that's great. At least for me, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's kind of what I figured. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, no nays. Okay. So I'm going to move this up here to the top. There's... Yeah. Okay. Uh, go for it, Lars. Okay. I, I do not really know uh, how far everybody is involved in this, but uh, I'm right now about to write a uh, marketing white paper about the micro profile, the current, uh, the current what's going on and stuff like this. And I would like to invite all of you to review the white paper. I posted a link in the chat for the white paper, so you can open it and um, you will see several commands by me and you will see several sections uh, marked in, with red color. And every time you see something in red, uh, this will mean that you should have a deeper look at it or that you may first read the command uh, and then have a deeper review look at it. I don't see the link, Lars, in the chat. I'm going to add that right now. Oh, uh, I'm going to add it to the meeting in a minutes. Okay. Thank you. So hopefully that uh, that works there. Well, this is more of a technical white paper, right? Uh, no, the target the target audience uh, sh uh, shall be decision makers, so not the hardcore programmer. And that's, for example, why you will not see any code right now inside the white paper. But this is also a question of me. You will see it when you read the commands or my uh, my commands. If we shall add some some, for example, simple code fragments with annotations to show how easy it will be to use microprofile. To develop, uh, so you are including uh, code samples, right? Right now, there are no code samples, but in my opinion, it would make sense to include some code samples. Right. So it's more explaining uh, what are my, uh, what what are the challenges about microservices and how can MicroProfile help you in a vendor neutral way uh, without a vendor lock to solve all these problems or challenges. Yeah, my only comment is that if this is for decision makers, 
Yeah. Um, I would, yeah, definitely constrain the code examples. Um, I, I'm not quite sure if this is for decision makers, what the intent of having code samples would, would mean. Yeah, the, the reason is that it was supposed to be a technical white paper um, from okay. the beginning, because we are having another uh, IT decision maker white paper being put together now, uh, jointly with the Eclipse Foundation. So you, the, the, the white paper you were writing, Lars, was always meant to be technical, that's what I was asking. Okay, because I was told that it's only for decision makers and uh, not technical by the, uh, the market okay. because it's a marketing uh, white paper. Okay. All right. So my recommendation is, um, Cesar, if you can go back, uh, you know, to the marketing folks and, and kind of get this cleared up, then... Yeah we can figure out how to provide feedback. So I'm actually, it, it might make sense for us to, to pause on providing feedback like right away. But what I can, but what we can do, it depends how broad, how, how broad you of feedback you want Lars. Cause you know, if you're the Google group, we say, Hey, please review this white paper. You know, then you're going to have a, potentially a lot of cooks in the kitchen. If you want to constrain mm -hmm. it to, you know, the folks on the call, now, obviously, anyone can watch the replay and they'll and they'll find this. But um, if uh, you know, if you want to kind of have a constrained list of feedback just to manage, you know, potentially manage the feedback, then you know, we can send an email with update or or Cesar, you know, or myself or whoever, send a, mm -hmm. an email update with what we really want this white paper to be. Which format is this right now? It's it's Word or something like that. Or is it ASCII talk? So could we, if, if we really have a, I don't know the marketing papers from Caesar, which Caesar mentioned, yes. um, but uh, if we really are in need of a technical white paper, then what about turning this into kind of a, a book kind of thingy, which we could code develop on GitHub via Antora, for example. I'm not quite sure how much content there is, or is this probably way too far out? Mm -hmm. I think well, Mark, Mark, I think we've read the white paper, and I, I think it's technical enough for a white paper for mm -hmm. uh, architects and that sort of thing. Uh, if you want to do something with like code samples and all that kind of stuff, you're talking about more of a user guide or a tutorial or something like that. This this seems to be at the appropriate level, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I read that the. The paper, Lars' paper, and and it's it does have a technical, I mean, flavor to it. I think. I mean, arch, I think architect is a good audience for this yeah, paper. Yeah. yeah, it's a. I think we discussed the last time last week, and um, actually, I kind of agree with Cesar. Uh, I think we did mention about the code snippet. We didn't ask for the uh, live example. Right. Uh, uh, I think uh, yeah, because nowadays architects can understand the code, <laughs> and sometimes the code snippet can. Uh, I mean, uh, it's um, much better to uh, to explain things. Yeah. So we, we just said, okay, put some code snippet uh, like uh, in each uh, the, the specifications. It won't. It doesn't need to be that complete. Just like for example, for config, how do you do the injection? And then the architects say, oh, that's cool. That's really easy. I can understand it. So yeah. I think I'll give a lot. So I, I guess what, yeah, what I should, uh, that's what I was, I was trying to say. And I, I, I guess I misspoke when I meant technical. And when I was talking about code, I meant snippets. I didn't mean actually developing a full application within the paper. Okay, seven lines of code just to show how easy it is right. to use micro profile. Yeah. Right. Like config, I mean, just one single annotation, you enable yeah. config. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I can do this. And, okay. and again, uh, the, uh, back to the question, um, who can review the paper? For me, it would be very helpful if uh, in the beginning a smaller group will review the paper. And then I can integrate the, the comments or the suggestions. And maybe after this, when we all agree that it's the right direction, 
for example, code snippets, yes, no, uh, diagrams, yes, no, and questions, solve questions like this. Um, after this, we can open it to a, a brighter, wider audience. Okay, and when would you like feedback by? Is there a deadline for this smaller group? Um, what do you think? What is possible? I do not really know what, what is the deadline for the white paper. Does anybody know this? In last week, the call, Amelia seems to think uh, this needs to be ready by code one. And uh, it's in not. two weeks or three weeks. Yep. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive um, just to give us time to, if you want to broaden this to provide more time, then you can have to kind of, um, you know, do any finalization of the paper. I, I, I think if, if everyone can take, take a look at it by the end of the week, um, mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll try to do that. I don't know if everyone on this call will, right. Um, but I'll, I'll make a, uh, I'll make an effort to take a look at this by the end of the week. Okay, great. That just sounds sensible. I think it's uh, like a, to a small group and I uh, know this week and then like uh, open to public a wider group for next week. Yeah, if it is okay for you, I can work work on the commands uh, during the weekend. So, if, and so uh, by the beginning of the next week, we will have a final draft or something like this. Yeah, and the idea is after Lars uh, and the revisions are done, the next step is for Ryan to do the design work. And I'm not sure how, is he on the, phone, on the call now? Because I don't know how many days that he would need for that. Yeah. Good point, Cesar. I think is, uh, in, uh, we did a talk about uh, put a kind of image did we? Uh, right, right. Well, yeah, Ryan, uh, yeah, make it, you know, put micro profile colors and, you know, logos and stuff like that. Yeah, and I will provide him with several sketches, uh, yes. several images or ideas of images so he can maybe draw them in a nicer way than I can. Hey, uh, Lars, uh, Richard Monson Hefel. I noticed that. The copy that was on the chat link is not the same one that I've been commenting on. Is that is it a clean version after adjusting the comments, or is it if I've been commenting on the wrong one? Um, again, Richard, you said some comments are missing. Richard, I see some comments of yours there. I'm just not seeing them. I, I have I I know. at the bottom of page four, there is a comment by you there. I um I agreed on mostly all of your comments, and when I agreed, I resolved them so they are not visible anymore, but they are inside uh, the document. So maybe that's why you think they are missing. Um okay, so the one I'm looking at has, I just did this yesterday. There's a ton of comments in there. Yesterday? Yeah. So, so, but you're sure you're on the right document? Well, <laughs> I'm on the one we've been editing thus far, but maybe, maybe that changed. I'll put in the link to the one I've been, uh, I commented on yesterday. Yeah, and if I if I got the wrong one, I apologize. I only had one in my shared folder, so I'm not sure what. Uh, okay, but, there should be one in the uh, Eclipse Foundation micro profile folder, and there's a special folder, as far as I know, for for the white paper. Um. So I just put the link into the one that I've been. Yeah. Editing. And uh, this is related, but it's an, another topic. I don't know if you plan to cover it, John, about um, uh, 
modifying the mission. Because mm. this paper is using the mission in there, at the very top. Okay, I'm just just for Richard, I'm not quite sure if we have the right document or do because I think this uh, version 0.1 uh, is the right one. Well, I don't know. Um, <laughs> okay, um, maybe what I can do is go in and take my comments and copy them over to this version or something. I don't know. Yeah, if you think this is possible. I'm, I'm just a little myth because I, I'm not really sure why I have the wrong version. Who created that version that you were using? Let me look. I'm not sure. How do you tell that actually? Just do doc well, info under file. In the, in, in the case of time, I guess I'd like us to, to maybe yeah, try and nail cool down on. which version would you prefer we use, Lars? Um, um, I would prefer to use the version I, uh, I copied the link to the chat. Okay. But I wonder why there's a, a second version around. So oh. can, can maybe anybody go to the, to the um, Eclipse Foundation micro profile Google Drive folder and take a look what, because I'm not sure if I have access to this folder. So my recommendation is, is let's get this figured out offline and then update the link in the meeting minutes. Yeah, yeah. And just so we have the right link that you want us to review. Okay, great. And if we have time at the end of the meeting, maybe we can go back to this, but uh, okay, so. <coughs> Okay. Um, okay. So the MicroProfile two point one status update. So um, I submitted it yesterday to the. Well, the release was defined. I submitted it uh, yesterday, and then it turns out I had to resubmit it today because I <laughs> the email bounced. So, um, so I got that taken care of. Hopefully, we can still get this uh, approved during tomorrow's vote, uh, or sorry, uh, PMC review. So, um, again, every other week, the technology PMC reviews releases, uh, and the next review date is tomorrow. So uh, hopefully they will um, uh, take, have a chance to look at it and approve tomorrow. Um, for MicroProfile 2.2, um, from what we discussed uh, either last meeting or a couple meetings ago, was that we're gonna target three releases per year. So February, I think June 1st, basically, and then October 1st, roughly. Um, so this is going to target February 1st. Um, and these are the candidate specifications. Um, I guess if, if there's any feedback from folks on the call about, um, potential, uh, specification updates in the micro profile 2.1, sorry, 2.2 release, um, providing any updates here. Uh, sorry, I didn't have a metrics version off the top of my head. So Heiko, if you're on, just update that. And October 5th is the uh, release for 2.1, right? Uh, well, oct well technically oct October 3rd is the vote and it'll take a couple of days potentially to, to actually go through the release process mm -hmm. to actually call it a formal release. Okay. So, so okay. the way we have it defined right now, um, Kevin and I chatted about it, and October fifth is the actual date. Okay. Assuming it gets approved tomorrow. Yeah. 
So how, uh, because is um, currently microprofile reactive uh, streams operators uh, hadn't done one or release as yet. Um, and I um, uh, hadn't gone down the final release as yet because it's still in the middle of the refactor some APIs. If you do the release um, kind of all these kind of reviews, and then later on, like uh, next week, and et cetera, and the reactive operators uh, do another uh, release candidate too. Will this have any knock on effect? No. Okay. In fact, let me do this. <laughs> Good. Uh, I think it's 1.2. Sorry, I'm going from memory. I think I got that right. Yep, that's right. Yep. So, yeah, the reactive operators spec is occurring out of band of the, M of, of the actual MP release. And I still yeah. have this action item to kind of begin defining a platform release, what a platform release is, and maybe some processes about making, you know, what makes it into a platform release and how and when, and we can all kind of collaborate around that. I'll, 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 within this month, I hope to be able to kind of get that started so we can collaborate around it. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Like uh, a 2.1 doesn't, doesn't include the reactor reactive stream the operators, so the operators can be released uh, anytime. Yes, it can be released anytime as an independent uh, release. Yeah. So my, uh, so I think the, uh, my earlier question is, with does one or release, it does, does, does it really need another review or the review you have got is uh, good enough? Looks, uh, yeah, Kevin already answered, so that's good enough. So that's kind of simple simple to do that release. Yeah, so the one thing, John, though, that you could do is um, start with a release candidate one for microprofile 2.1. Yeah, I, I think, I, hmm. wait, sorry, a release candidate one Oh, I know. I see what you're saying. of Of the actual MP. Sorry, I was thinking MP22. Yeah. Okay. No, that, yeah. that that makes sense. I see what you're saying. I'll see what I can do there. So let me take a note on that. Okay. All right, so uh, assuming that we don't have any other comments about either 2.1 or 2.2, this is the, again the current candidate list. Um, anything else about releases? I think it's for coming up for tolerance, I think, yeah, I'm uh, trying to get them into 2.2. Two. We are, no, no, no I am. <laughs> okay. Um, Heiko, you had a question around uh, OSGI and pull requests. Uh, you're on, on mute, Heiko. The floor is yours. Ah, no. Well, thank you for listening. Ah. To it. Yeah, it's this was the hard, hardware mute of the uh, of the headset, <laughs> ah. as opposed to the software <laughs> mute of the the, the Zoom app. Um, so there were a number of pull requests. Um, if you go to that uh, reference pull request to the, all the individual microprofile specifications about some OSGI uh, stuff where I have no clue about anyway and, and even the IBM um, members on a microprofile metrics call don't really know what to do here. And apparently Emily is um, taking care of it. Um, and so I just 
thought I would be good if Emily could enlighten us a little bit here, uh, because I'm sure I'm not alone with uh, to the question what this is about and what how we should react. Okay, so uh, as Mark said, actually, the, when he said uh, the full name, uh, the Rima, okay, the reorg from Life Free and open up the pull request against um, uh, uh, most of the micro profile stacks. Basically, it's, uh, there's a couple of things uh, open. One is um, uh, the service loader uh, change. I think Mark put some uh, comments on that and he decided not to to propose that the other bit is uh, in the um, in the in the our api bundles and he directly add the require uh, capability basically is uh, uh, you know in the osgi there's a spec is called a java contract so that java contract is truly trying to mandate the all the java EE apis to supply to supply some capabilities. However, that specification was quite uh, silently ignored. For example, CDI APIs, it does not provide any OSGI capabilities. So in his pull request, he directly add uh, required capability. However, I'm saying uh, at the moment, like uh, if we download the API from the um, CDI API from Maven Central, there's uh, no such uh, uh, like a uh, provider, no provider capability, and we directly like add uh, in our API, like add the consumer require capability, and he argument we have to start from somewhere. But I'm saying it's better to start from the supplier instead of from the consumer because if we put that requirement in. So for each OSGI environment, they have to do a manifest rewrite and to supply this um, capability. So that's uh, where it was. So I think it's a better way to uh, put in the Jakarta EE to properly, um, I mean, satisfy the Java contract, basically to provide a proper capability. And then we can, <coughs> we can, we can do the required capability. Okay, so these producer and require and so on, that's all on the OSGI semantics level so yeah. that, that the runtime knows what to pull in recursively, basically. Yeah, yeah. Okay. OSGI environment, yeah. So um, suppose these pull requests would be merged. This would not have any impact on, let's say, a non-OSGI environment. Uh, but yeah, it uh, will not have a have a much impact. Uh, probably wouldn't have any impact on the OS non OSGI because the header was silently ignored. However, this will have a no con effect on the OSGI. Mm -hmm. So uh, is a uh, is a uh, kind of merging this PR it cause uh, headaches rather than like uh, gain much. The only advance is kind of put a pressure to the OSGI supplier at the environment to, to do manifest rewrite to, to uh, like uh, provide the capability uh, which was left um, behind by the, by the like uh, API suppliers. So, uh, so I think it's better to be looked uh, after by the Jakarta EE uh, umbrella stack or the kind of the how to make a Jakarta EE to um, honor the existence of Java contract, Java contract the specification done by OSGI. I think it's a good thing, it's a good thing. However, we need to make sure, I mean, we start from the supplier um, mm -hmm. and from the consumer. Okay, thank you. No problem. Sorry, if, if, if Heiko or uh, Emily kind of want to provide a quick summary, that would be awesome. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, and then, in fact, let me do this first. There we go, uh, test. There, now you can do your summary there. <laughs> All right, uh, 
micro profile mission modification question mark. This comes from uh, actually the white paper. So this is kind of a white paper topic. And I posed a question uh, as opposed to so, sorry, actually already open. John? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Before you get going past that point, because I've been looking at this, uh, these pull requests and stuff that are being requested to, to go in. So, Emily, is there going to be any issues if some of these changes get in? You know, like, so if these get merged into master, but we haven't done a microprofile 2.1 release yet is there any problem where maybe some of these changes you know we, we might get some of them in but not all of them I mean, is it something that, that they all have to go in together across all the components uh, no actually I don't think this PR should be merged at all so as I, as I no is this shouldn't be this is uh, this is um, what they are uh, or this kind of OSGI header, as I explained um, to Heiko, for the non-OSGI users, is that is there's no effect for OSGI users that will cause a bigger problem because that PR directly add the requirement. However, there's no no bundle to provide that request other than if uh, if the like we have to. Get this change in. We have to do the manifest rewrite, either to remove the, this header or uh, we just uh, rework the like CDI APIs to provide that capability for no apparent gain. So I suggest uh, to Ray uh, said that if you really want to do the OSDI uh, bundles the applications, it's better for him to uh, do a manifest rewrite in the meanwhile. Uh, in his environment because it is only impact him uh, and uh, it's better to be fixed in Jakarta EE not uh, in the um, not in this macro profile uh, current um, specifications I don't know whether I explained the cracks uh, uh, clearly basically his change to is to add a requirement however is that this requirement was not provided by any other uh, APIs at all. Okay, I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm just confused. Maybe I have to look at this closer, but I mean, I, I don't understand why we would have all of these PRs that are getting created, but we would never merge them. I don't know, it's not making sense to me. <laughs> it's an, uh, I, I, I can talk to you. I don't know whether I can talk to you afterwards. So this is never merged, but some PRs will not merge this because it's either is a, is not a, not a good time or is not quite right. Not every PR will get merged though. Okay, so I just to throw this out to everybody, am I the only one confused? If so, that's fine. I mean, I understand that this is not a PR that or PRs that we have been asking for, like um, there's a need and someone needs to fix it, but they just came in. And to, uh, I can follow Emily here that if these are merged that this can have impact to to OSGI users that want to have micro profile in OSGI environments that, right. uh, or, or negative impacts let me let me say it this way so that this may be problematic to be merged I mean if we would have asked people like oh can someone fix that for OSGI and then we would say now now we reject then you would be right that this is a, a bad situation Okay, because I guess I'm just kind of wondering, because I know that, you know, well, Raymond has a talk that he's doing at EclipseCon Europe, talking about how um, microprofile and OSGI are a perfect combination together. And it, it's kind of like, okay, if, <laughs> if he's going to be talking about that, it seems like he would need 
some of this metadata in order to make it work properly within an OSGI um, bundle and, and versioning mechanism. So I'm, I, I guess I'm just kind of confused by it. When you mentioned EclipseCon Europe, I, I wanted to suggest, so let's talk to him in person there, but I guess yeah. it's too late for his talk then. <laughs> well, still, I, you know, I, I was planning to touch base with him anyway, uh, just to get to know this effort a little bit better. So may, maybe that's where we can get it straightened out. Okay, so I guess bottom line, these PRs are not going to be merged at this point. This is my understanding, yes. Okay. Then, then, I'm, then I'm probably okay because as I was looking at them, I was wondering what the impact was going to be to us. So. Okay. Um, sounds like you guys have kind of come to, a, to an end there. So I'll start <laughs> the, the next topic. Um, Mission, the microprofile mission modification. So this came uh, from the white paper, All right? If, if, yeah, I don't see my comment in here either in this one. Um, an open forum to optimize, right? Th this is our, um, our, our mission that we've had in place for a long time. Um, and the question was this statement right here with the goal of standardiz standardization. When we first started, um, the JCP was where we thought our specs may, may end up. Now, um, it looks like our specs may more or less be adopted by Jakarta EE, which is under the Eclipse Foundation, which isn't necessarily a standards organization per se. So I guess it's, it's an open question, you know, is with well, the goal of standardization still the goal if, you know, do we still consider Jakarta EE to be a standard? <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it, it's not like we specifically identified JCP. We didn't capitalize standardization to kind of, you know, point out a certain organization. And I do believe that the goal of Jakarta EE, they will be defining, I mean, yeah, it's not a standards body, if you look that up, but they are looking to, um, you know, have a tough, strict rain on the specifications that are generated. So, you know, as long as we're talking about it generically, uh, you know, having them being standardized, I still think it's valid. That's my viewpoint. Other comments? I guess my one comment would be that I find it interesting just because I don't recall standardization ever being a goal. I always viewed it as a if some of the things we're doing end up becoming pushed as standards for Java E, Jakarta E, or something else at some point in the future, that's great. But I didn't realize it was a, this is the whole purpose of microprofile. And uh, how do we marry um, the agility that we're, we're, um, we're exercising within microprofile and, and the fast moving moving projects, and also the the understanding that we within microprofile we don't um, promise backwards compatibility, whereas usually in, in the standard you do have that. So I mean, that's um, a misalignment there. So, so um, if I could just comment quickly, um, I'm on the standards committee, and we're, they, the standards process we're defining is actually. Um, Right now is Eclipse wide, so any Eclipse uh, working group can adopt the standard process and modify it to its own needs. So we're first creating a generic standards process and then refining that. We'll come back later and refine that for Jakarta E specifically. But the idea was that other working groups like the IoT working group and possibly the MP could take that process and, uh, you know, use it for their own projects. Uh, Richard, just to clarify that a little bit, microprofile is not part of any working group. So technically we cannot use that specification process. Okay, I might have misspoken, uh, I meant project, but I guess it would have to be a working group, yeah. Yep, yep. 
so but you see from my perspective i think that's that's goodness <laughs> um because then jakarta ee cannot come at us and say you have to follow this specification process and we can say no we don't have to because we're not part of your working group so we can continue with our own process so i think it's good that we're not inherently uh, included in that definition i would also add on top of what you just said that um, the specification process will definitely hinder the agility that the MP has had thus far. Yes. My fear, yeah. Yeah. The original, um, so to, to get to, to Ken's um, point about the goal of standardization, when we first founded MicroProfile, we wanted, we, we, we didn't want their, we didn't want the perception of MicroProfile trying to fork Java EE and move forward um, without it. Because keep in mind, when we founded MicroProfile, Java EE had all but kind of stopped, right? And um, where we're at, I, I think, uh, well, so we use the word standardization with the idea of adding new specs so that, you know, they could be adopted by um, the JCP and the configuration JSR is just a, is is an example of that, right? So it was the one that was uh, one of the first specs that we did. I think well, it was the first spec um, that was homegrown, and we went through. We we w began the uh, JSR kind of process through a submission. Now I understand that may not from from your perspective, that's not necessarily a goal, just a path of, that we took. But the early on idea was that uh, it was kind of a goal because we didn't necessarily want to fork into two communities. I don't know uh, if, if some of the other kind of folks involved, like really, really early on, have any thoughts around that, if you think I got that right or not. I think that's pretty accurate. Okay, I guess then my view would be is we don't need that line in the mission. Because I, I wouldn't see it to be our goal that everything we do ends up in a standard, whether it's JCP, Jakarta EE, um, uh, Oasis, or anywhere else. If stuff becomes a spec or those organizations want it to become a spec for whatever reason, then that's great, but that shouldn't be our end goal. Uh, that, that, you know, I, that's probably fair. I, I'm I guess I'm just kind of wondering, so it seems like you you definitely have an issue with having that standardization statement in there. Is there some reason? I mean, is that well, bothering my, some activity? Uh, I don't know that I'm aware of any problems with that. It's just from my perspective, that statement implies that everything we do, we want to push as a standard somewhere. Oh, okay. okay. And I don't so necessarily see that as the case. I okay. Yep. Now that you explain that viewpoint, then I can understand where you're coming from. So I'm I'm missing again. Where where was this statement? I know you had it on your screen for a second. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Give a moment of silence while everyone reads. Yep. So it's uh, kind of the future of this um, micro profile. Like uh, I think it's true. Um, some spec may end up as a standard, like go through the same Jakarta uh, E standard body. I mean, it would be nice to have some hint to say actually, it's just, if if like required or if possible or makes right. sense, we should push for standard. That's what. Yeah. See, and that's the way that I was always reading it. Just yeah. saying that, okay, it's a goal of standardization, but now, you know, if looking at Ken's reading of it, it, it almost sounds like, okay, but that, that is the end goal of all of, the, all of this activity, and, and that may not be the case. Right, and, and I think from my perspective, it kind of reads as a, if we don't want to standardize something, then we've failed in the mission, at least in the way it's worded. Now, maybe the desire to standardize where possible needs to be documented somewhere else other than the mission. Um, 
maybe as some kind of like list of objectives kind of thing? I don't know. I mean, one question from my side, but um, maybe a language thing. Um, does standardized standardization automatically imply that it has to go to a standard body like uh, W3C or, or similar? Or can it, could it also mean that this creates a common ground for all these um, implementations that where um, users right. of them can just exchange them uh, without hassle? Well, there's also the concept of a de facto standard. Yeah, I, I was just saying mm -hmm. this de facto versus de jure standard. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, the original intent was not de facto. Um, I mean, if you go back to original intent, it really was to submit to the JCP was the intent, right? Even though we didn't specifically name the JCP. So, um, yeah. So how, how do you fit a, you know, like the word maybe into all of that, John? <laughs> <laughs> kind of, kind of maybe. Yeah. So. Well, that's, I'll be honest. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I brought this up. It, it, it started out as a comment on, on the other doc, right? Where, where uh, I think it was the same doc that Richard had, um, where I added the comment saying, is this really still the case right now mm -hmm. in, in the current environment that we're in? And, and what does standardization, you know, may, maybe the definition of standardization means. And I, I take Ken's comment to heart. If it doesn't become a standard, does that imply it fails? Well, no, right? Because that may not be the goal of a particular spec. Um, so, uh, I'm, I'm trying to, I guess I, I'm trying to figure out what to do. I, I'm actually okay with just deleting that, that section. Yeah, I think we, when we discussed this originally, we just decided to explicitly say we are not a standards body, but we kind of provide input for standardization later in a separate body. So the standardization is not part of microprofile. Right, right, and that, I don't think anybody has been saying that we were going to do, you know, become a standards body. Agreed. Yeah, it's, it's a trade off innovation where you can kind of move agile or be a standards body, but you can't do both really well. Otherwise you break backward compatibility and so on. And that's not possible for, for a good standard at least. So, John, so I, I don't think that, you know, we want to make a final decision here, um, you know, just with this one discussion, but I wonder if this should be a, a topic that, you know, maybe we post and, and this is the only topic is just to talk about, you know, a possible modification of our mission statement. Yeah. And just I, removing I, the portion that you have highlighted there. Yeah, I, I can do that. Um... An item here. You know, because we are we are missing a couple of vocal people um, from our call today, without naming names. I don't know. Those are pretty vocal ones here now. <laughs> <laughs> Myself included. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna assign myself this this AI here. Okay. All right. Um, that leads us to the uh, end of the agenda with 10 minutes left. Could this be a first? Yeah, very efficient. Thank you. I did my well, best. Uh, one thing I just wanted to bring up, John, is I know I raised something a few weeks back and then I wasn't able to attend a meeting. What's What was the kind of result of the discussion around like samples and conference? Ah, thank you. Uh, that's actually a good agenda item. What do we do? The I, th I think the general summary of it, Ken, is that the uh, the conference app is getting out of date. Is that the right? Oh, discussion yeah. you were thinking I, don't, I don't think it's a getting it is okay yep. <laughs> appearance application 
uh, do we keep it up to date or, you know, I'm going to put down mission accomplished. <laughs> or do we continue to evolve it with support for latest specs? That's basically um, the big question that's on the floor right now. Yeah. I mean, it's it's easy to say, yes, we should keep it up to, up to date. Um, then there's doing the work and there's, you know, do we still see perceived value out of the conference application? Um, from my perspective, I'll just throw mine out there um, to get the discussion going here. I think there is value um, because it shows, you know, a level of portability either directly or implied um, across micro profile implementations. Um, I think that's a good thing. Um, I think it's a pretty, pretty strong value proposition and message, but it takes work, right? It takes work from people besides me. So um, that's where I'll, I, I guess I'll leave it open for others to comment. About the only way, I mean, I, I agree that I, I think it, it, ab, it absolutely did serve a purpose. Um, I don't know if it, you know, is still, I mean, especially since we haven't been keeping it up to date. But in order to really enforce that, we would almost have to make it a requirement for a uh, component release. You know, like, okay, maybe it doesn't have to, but was the conference app updated with for config 1.3 as an example and that's a requirement or else you don't know nope, you can't release uh, um, but if we don't do something like that i don't know how we're going to keep it keep it up to date but this is a chicken egg problem if we kind of push it to a new micro profile config 1.4 for example and nobody implements it yet you can't run it anywhere except the brand new containers which are still in snapshot mode but not yet released from the vendors well, right, and maybe that's not maybe that's a timing uh, type issue. Um, or we have kind of a, a yeah, yeah. master, and the next and the next is kind of updated, and once it uh, vendors publish their their um, containers, then we kind of switch branches. Maybe that's the way to do it, that the master is the last version where everything works. And then when we're coming to do a new release, so like MicroProfile 2.2, that each um, subspec can submit PRs to it. And basically we create a snapshot of master and create it 2.2. And then everyone puts PRs, changing the APIs against this thing. And then when the implementers have actually got releases that support that, then that can be updated and we can switch the 2.2 two to a master and the master to whatever version of MicroProfile it was that actually that supported. Yeah. I know that but the downside is that's a lot of work to maintain and keep going. Um, and it's another thing for every spec to do as part of a release. I mean, probably we have still have the open point with the umbrella TCK. Probably we can have this as an umbrella TCK kind of thing. So if the sample runs, then we are kind of fine. Or is it a different purpose? Well, you know, we, we have talked about that as to whether or not we need a top level, you know, you called it a TCK, but at the micro profile level, then maybe, maybe that's... Well, we, we certainly need that from some discussions we had in the architecture call last week. There's some things we want to introduce at like an umbrella spec level yep. that will require some kind of umbrella TCK. Um, but that is a slightly different thing than having an example app with different runtimes and showing off all the APIs. Yeah. That, yeah. That's awesome. In, in some respects, I'm wondering whether particularly the conference app almost needs to be 
treated as a subspec in itself in the sense that it has a lead and there are like it has its own meetings probably nowhere near as frequently as like the subspecs we have but maybe like once a month or once every two months so that there can actually be a group to work on it and there is some someone actually kind of leading it and reporting to the wider group as to what's going on um just trying to think of ways to make sure stuff gets done basically i actually kind of like that idea yeah, it's a good idea. Uh, again, I think uh, we discussed uh, the kind of like uh, update uh, this conference up um, and before we can release, and we dropped the idea in the previous uh, like uh, conversation. Is just because the like implementation need to catch up. I think uh, if we have a bit leeway, like uh, like uh, for give a few months for the conference up to catch up. Like now, like Piara and Open Liberty has the um, micro profile one for release, and then quite a few apps can be updated. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, I think uh, is that uh, we need to put some effort into this conference app. Uh, one other question I ask myself is, what is the goal of the conference app? Should it be rather an kind of entry? To micro profile or should it showcase all the full set of features because that's orthogonally different so either we keep it to the core features and make it easier to enter or we kind of have the showcase for all the feature sets but then it will get complex complicated or complex and well harder to to grasp for the the users who look at it for the first time well i think I think from memory, the original idea was that the samples repo would be kind of like the very specific get into micro profile, how to use it and um, not go into too much detail. And the conference app was like basically the big bucket of everything working together. Um, but some features also are exclusive or so they exclude each other. Yeah, I mean, the, the conference app from how I perceived it when, when Scott was porting it over and trying to get it to run and all that. This was a huge thing uh, with many different moving pieces and so on. So I, I'm not sure if this is really entry level, but it's more like the, the kitchen sink where you can showcase everything. Uh, yeah. what I, I kind of think of it as the pet store app. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty good. Um, this description. By the way, we have like one minute left. Uh, I think the last thing I'll throw in is originally we, we kind of did this as a showcase to show, you know, all the vendors running micro, micro, micro profile to kind of build some awareness around this being a, a multi-vendor um, or multi-organization because not everyone's necessarily vendors um, initiative. And then we started thinking of it as kind of a there's been talks of considering it as a, a platform level, kind of like TCK, right? Um, I I can't remember if these were a part of the live hangouts or just ad hoc conversations or whatever, but the conversation has come up in the past. So I think, um, you know, at the top of the hour, um, can, can someone else besides me <laughs> continue this conversation in the Google group? and ask kind of what we want to do. Do I have to assign somebody? Ken brought this up. What was that? <laughs> Ken brought this up. Who is this first? <laughs> I don't think he brought up the... <laughs> There's some truth in that, Ken. <laughs> but... Okay, are there any volunteers who feel gracious today before... I'll do it. Okay. I was, I was going to say that we could assign it to the new guy, Martin, but that would be kind of mean. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks a lot. We, we highly encourage attending. third party, uh, uh, not third party, more uh, uh, attendance. Sorry, I, don't, I apologize if you hear my dogs in the background. This is the notes to uh, perhaps uh, end the call. We're, we're one after the hour. Uh, thanks everyone for attending. Um, we have some action items to follow up on. 
So uh, please do so throughout the week. And uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Same bat time, same bat channel. Yay. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Everybody. See you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Good afternoon. Bye. <clears throat>